Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I return to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but welcome back. It's me, it's Malcolm, and today, today, uh, we're going to talk about something I thought I would never talk about on this channel. Uh, you already read the title, so let's just not dilly-dally anymore. We're going to talk about Steven Hilberg, who passed away a couple years ago. He was the creator of SpongeBob SquarePants, the show. Uh, it's still running to this day with like new episodes coming out like uh, every Saturday, I believe. Uh, so this started, I wanna say two years ago, but it's resurfacing now because there was a trailer for a SpongeBob spinoff called Camp Coral. And I can't really show you any clips because I think Nickelodeon will claim it or Viacom or whoever uh, claims stuff for Nickelodeon so I don't want to like show anything but I will show screenshots of the video that I saw but for context um, so when he passed away the NFL uh, had the Super Bowl they seemed like they were going to give a tribute to Steven Hillenburg because one of the most iconic scenes from Spongebob Squarepants was the Sweet Victory Halftime uh, Bubble Bowl uh, that Squidward Tentacles was like in charge of and like Spongebob and all the gang like really sang a dope song and to this day I think it's one of the best cartoon scenes of all time. So the NFL decided to like clickbait people that were like emotionally attached and thought they were going to get a tribute when in turn it was actually an intro to Sicko Mode for the halftime show for the Super Bowl that year. So people were pissed at the NFL that whole year. People made memes about it and all that stuff. So coming back now to 2021. Uh, in 2021, uh, a few days ago, the NFL decided to uh, have Nickelodeon host or like feature one of their NFL wildcard games. And what makes this significant is uh, the animators actually did like certain animations to react to things that were happening in the game. Also, the Camp Coral trailer was to premiere during halftime. Now, personally for me, I find that kind of like disrespectful in two ways because one, you clickbaited Steven Hillenburg's death when he passed away and had all these Spongebob fans thinking you were going to give him a tribute. And to then go back a couple years later and then kind of like have Spongebob be like one of the main features in this Nickelodeon wildcard game collaboration. It was, it just felt kind of weird. So uh, for me, that part was weird. And people, uh, people really didn't talk about that part, but I kind of noticed that. I just kind of noticed that that was kind of weird to me. Just kind of, they clickbaited with Steven Hillenburg's passing only to them like premiere, like, use Spongebob heavily and their Nickelodeon NFL crossover thing, whatever that was. Um, so we get to the main part. This Camp Coral spinoff, whatever this is, I watched the trailer and personally it looked like graphics from a video game. It didn't really look like an animation type thing. Something I did not know was Steven Hillenburg actually had specific requests for the Spongebob show. Uh, and it seems like a lot of people wanted that to be honored even in his passing, but it seems like, like the animators or whoever's in charge of the show now has like broken all of Steven Hillenburg's like SpongeBob rules. So I did a little bit of research and I actually found a change.org petition from two years ago when the Camp Coral spinoff was actually being announced. And what makes people upset about that is also, it seemed like Steven Hillenburg was like very against spinoffs or like certain things for his SpongeBob show. So I'm just gonna read the change.org petition, like the whole description, cause they summarize it better than I could. So it goes like this. So as you can see, uh, this change.org petition has like 9,000, like 9,300 signatures right now. Uh, that's because it jumped up after people saw the trailer 
uh, during the NFL halftime on Nickelodeon. So people like went to the change.org petition that was already up from two years ago and started signing it again. Reads as follows. Get Nickelodeon to respect SpongeBob creators wish for no spinoffs. Cancel Camp Coral. And then this person goes on to write. Immediately after the death of SpongeBob SquarePants creator Steven Hillenburg, Nickelodeon announced that it was planning, quote, over a half dozen, unquote, spinoffs of his show. They jumped at this chance as soon as possible, since Hillenburg always said no to the idea of a spinoff. And I actually had to go find the article about spinoffs. And this is where some people are like, like split down the middle because he didn't specifically say he hated spinoffs or things like that. Uh, I believe the quote was he just didn't see one happening. So some people took that as he never wanted a spinoff of his show, which in context makes sense. But also some people are saying, well, he never like dismissed the idea altogether. So people are definitely split down the middle, especially with that quote so just keep that in mind as i read on and just like uh give you a little bit uh more details uh the change.org petition continues on to say for context hillenberg was strongly against spinoffs and quotes aging down unquote spongebob's character the first spinoff to be announced is a combination of everything he did not want to see his creation turn into camp coral will feature a 10 year old spongebob and his kid friends Back when Hillenburg pitched the show in the 1990s, the executives wanted to turn the original show into the same exact thing, insisting that SpongeBob would never be popular if it was about an adult character, which is a lie. That show was popular because SpongeBob is a kid at heart. That was like his whole thing. So to say like an adult like can't appeal to kids on Nickelodeon, it's kind of like, I don't, I don't understand that part from the executives for that. Hillenberg adamantly told them, no, that's not the show. Through his creation, he wanted to convey that people, like SpongeBob, don't have to grow up when they become an adult. They can still have fun, be happy, and love what they do. He was ready to walk out on Nickelodeon entirely before the execs loosen up. So I don't even know about that, just the fact that SpongeBob couldn't, might not have even existed. Uh, that's crazy to think about because Spongebob being an adult actually opens him up to more adventures. If he was a kid, then you would have to like have his parents around and like it would be just more so like a kid getting in trouble kind of like show. It wouldn't be as entertaining in my opinion. We already have enough of Nickelodeon, not even Nickelodeon, we already have enough cartoon shows where like uh, kids and adults are like living together and then like all these wacky adventures happen so a cartoon like that back in the day wouldn't have been as impactful uh the petition goes on still saying now that he's gone and can't stop them then nickelodeon executives have gone behind hillenberg's back and are planning to milk his creation as much as they can paul tibbet an animator whom Steven chose to become his successor as the Spongebob show writer for an entire decade, said this about the spinoff on June 4th. And I'm guessing this is June 4th of uh, the year that they were announcing this. So, the quote reads, This is some greedy, lazy executiving right here. And they all know full well Steve would have hated this. Shame on them. So now we're getting people that work with Steven Hillenburg directly saying, yeah, he wouldn't have liked this. He definitely would have hated this. So that's kind of interesting to think about. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and this is like the conclusion of it. I know it was a lot to read. Like this person like seemed like they really, really did their research and like really went into depth about the whole situation. So in conclusion, and that's coming from one of the people that knew him best, like I just said. Please let Nickelodeon and its new president, Ryan Robbins, know that we will not accept this ill-intentioned, greedy executive meddling. We need to let Robbins know that we can see past the exec's sneaky ways and that we will not support their backhand moves. By signing this petition, we are asking that they stop production on Camp Coral, which is scheduled to begin later this month. And uh, just reminding you that this was a petition pitched two years ago so 
the fact that I didn't even know about this until a couple days ago when I saw that trailer, that's just crazy to think about how Nickelodeon really kept this under wraps, which is kind of like, so that was a lot to read, but basically, um, and this isn't the only post, I saw like Reddit posts, a bunch of threads basically saying like some the similar thing that Steven Hillenburg would not want this spinoff, uh, whatever you want to call it. And I'm about to show you some screenshots and I'm going to explain why it doesn't work in like Spongebob canon. So the first screenshot I want to show and it's going to be prevalent. Like first screenshot, you can see the animation. It's not really good uh i mean i'm not an animator but just looking at other shows that nickelodeon has produced especially with like 3d modeling 3d animation uh this is definitely one of like not the best like they had teenage mutant ninja turtles uh that was 3d it looks so dope but i think it was canceled and people hated that as well so Nickelodeon has the ability to have good animation, so looking at this screenshot, like I already saw the trailer, so I can't really show you because it'll get claimed, but you can see for yourself, it's all online, uh, but these are just my opinions. So first screenshot I got. The next one, the next one, this is going to be more so important because it messes with the Spongebob timeline. So. We have, in this screenshot, we have Spongebob, Sandy Cheeks, and Patrick Star. Now, if anybody knows Spongebob from like the first few seasons, Sandy Cheeks actually like moves to Texas when she's an adult. So, in Spongebob canon, Sandy Cheeks should not be at Camp Coral because it legit does not make sense in the timeline because Sandy Cheeks move to Bikini Bottom from Texas when she was older. So to go back and just kind of like forget that she lived in Texas and then move to Bikini Bottom, that just kind of messes with the timeline, which is why uh, some people are also upset. And also you can see that SpongeBob is definitely aged down, which seems like something Steven Hillenburg did not want. And this is the third and final screenshot I wanted to show, just showing like the look of SpongeBob doesn't look right. I know it's like uh, like in a surprise expression, but looking throughout the whole trailer, it just didn't look right at all. Uh, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm very familiar with the 2D animation SpongeBob, which if they were going to do a spinoff, I would have just kept the 2D animation. Um, because once you switch from 2D to 3D and it doesn't look right, people tend to hate it more. Um, maybe that's just me, but the animation altogether, like, like people have put screenshots on Twitter and stuff. It just doesn't look right. Like, 3D SpongeBob was cool for the movies and all because you needed it, but this Camp Coral spinoff. The animation just doesn't look good, in my opinion. And I've watched Nickelodeon since the 90s. I'm a 90s Nickelodeon dude. But SpongeBob was definitely one of my favorite shows growing up. So to see this is kind of disappointing. And I can definitely tell that Steven Hillenburg would never do something like this. So it does give a little bit more evidence to the fact that maybe Nickelodeon did go behind his back after his passing, which is not good. I would show like a bunch of Twitter comments and stuff, like that's what I do here to show that people are split down the middle, but you can definitely look for it on yourself. You can look at the SpongeBob Twitter and also the Nickelodeon Twitter. Uh, people are definitely split down the middle, but I did find this interesting list that I was trying to find in an article because I like to like validate if like things are true. But this is just a list I found like in the replies. So it could be right, it could be wrong, but I just found it very interesting and I'm just gonna like go through each item. So they said, this is literally a cash grab. They messed over Steven Hillenburg when he dies. I hope Nickelodeon fails because of this. They broke two rules so far. And so this person lists like five rules that Steven Hillenburg apparently had for his show, like, 
like the lore of the show so i'm gonna read them off the first one no spin-offs so we already went through that like in the first half of the video already two no younger spongebob again the first two rules have already been broken kind of um yeah so i like i said i don't know if this like list is like from an article or like this person is just inferring from other interviews but it seemed very credible to me at the time so if it's like wrong i apologize but i did find it interesting especially for the next three items because they it makes sense the third item spongebob can't get his license if you've watched spongebob enough you know that spongebob always gets close but never like he never achieves getting his driver license I think I think I read this somewhere. I think I read this in a Reddit post. It seems that if SpongeBob got his driver's license, that signifies that he grew up and he won't have his like innocence and he won't have his like kid personality anymore, which does make sense because a lot of people, especially in America, see getting a driver's license as you growing up and you being put into the real world. So I can definitely see why Spongebob never getting his license makes sense for the show, especially for a kid show like Spongebob, when Spongebob himself is an adult, yes, but he's also a kid at heart. But if he got a license, then that whole he's a kid at heart thing, it doesn't work anymore. This is an interesting one, and I never even thought about it until I read this list. Pearl's mother cannot be revealed. I never really thought about it that much, but Mr. Krabs is a crab and his daughter Pearl is a whale. So it kind of makes sense that we never see Pearl's mother and it seems that Pearl in the show never asks about uh, her mother and Mr. Krabs just never mentions it. I found that super interesting because like, what does that mean? Does does it mean Pearl's adopted and they don't want to bring that up or they don't want to like bring like the anatomy of a crab and a whale creating another whale like having kids ask questions like there's so many questions about that but I found that super interesting because I didn't even think about it but it makes sense and the fifth and final one which is kind of like what solidified this list for me as kind of credible Plankton cannot get the secret formula and that also makes sense because if he did then the point of the show would be over because Mr. Crab would go bankrupt and Spongebob would never have a job again so Plankton never getting the formula does make sense because you can always have him do like wacky things to try to get the formula but he never will. Uh, people have brought up that in the movie, I think the most recent movie, he does get the formula or whatever, but uh, some people don't count that as canon or whatever. So I found this list super, super interesting and it like it makes sense because if like if you did break one of these rules, it would kind of like take away from the show. Like if SpongeBob got his license, it feels like like what is what, what's what's his next big goal like what what's the next goal for him um he's a fry cook already at the crusty crab and he loves his job and he can always fight plankton so if any of those things are broken it just kind of like ruins the spongebob lore so what does this mean does this mean that nickelodeon are a bunch of snakes that disrespected steven hillenberg's wishes um I'm not going to say yes or no to that question because it seems like people, like I've, like I've already said, people are split down the middle with the interview he had a couple years ago about what he meant by he didn't see Spongebob having any spinoffs. Did he mean he hated the idea? Did he mean that he was never open to it, but maybe he might be one day? But unfortunately, since he is gone, we will never know. But the timing is the issue. And let me tell you why. If somebody passes away and they didn't do a certain thing for a long time, for example, YouTube, right? Let's say I myself created a content house with all these YouTubers that I knew and trusted. And it's like an exclusive invite only club 
to the point where I never wanted to include anybody else after a certain point. And then if people ask, well, would you be open to the idea of adding more people to your content house? And then I would be like, well, I really don't see it. And then let's say I pass away. Hopefully I don't anytime soon. So let's say I unfortunately passed away. And then people that were in my content house under my name decided to then invite people to what I created and that could be seen as well you disrespected me because I've already said I don't see that happening so it could be interpreted in that kind of way where if I wasn't going to be okay with it while I was alive why would you think it would be okay after my passing I think that's where the Spongebob fans are having the issue where if Steven Hillenburg was alive, they truly believe that he will be against this exact idea. And especially if they pitched the idea while he was alive and he said no and he tried to walk away and they loosened up, that could also be seen as they capitalized off his passing only to then start working on the show that he never wanted in the first place. So I can definitely see that side. I can also see the other side of well, he never explicitly said, I never want a spinoff. He never said it directly. So we can only interpret what he's already said in interviews and stuff. But unfortunately, unless his family themselves know what he wanted, I don't think we'll ever know like what he truly wanted for SpongeBob SquarePants. And that is kind of sad to think about, like you'll never get the answer, but yeah, it's just kind of sad. I'm getting a little bit sad, but we shall see. Once again, it is Malcolm, that's me. I have a Nickelodeon hoodie, cause that's gonna be my theme this year. I wear Nickelodeon stuff. Subscription button up here, two other videos over there for your own free time. Without further ado, I wish you well. I wish you good health and I will see you again next time.